All right, this is part two of my series looking at Carl Bau's uh, television program, Creation in the 21st Century. Uh, this particular episode stars Ian Juby, the Canadian creationist, uh, and is entitled Down from the Trees. i uh, got to get started here. Now, when he got older, he, he firmly believed and was convinced he was going to be a missionary. This man would stand on a soapbox in the middle of the streets, preach to the crowds, get people saved. He'd call people up in their bedrooms just to harass them into becoming a Christian. And later on, now, he firmly believed he could be a scientist and a missionary. Now, I agree. I think you can Certainly. be a scientist so and a missionary. I know some, yes. However, by trying to become a scientist, he wound up indoctrinated with the evolutionary faith, the myth of evolution, and he wound up believing it. That man was Louis Leakey. Okay, I know I, st I showed that clip in the first part, and I'm going to revisit it because there's a whole bunch of points about it I wanted to make. Uh, now, uh, Ian Juby is talking about Louis Leakey, the scientist Louis Leakey, uh, the the father of modern anthropology, paleoanthropology, um, and basically making the claim that he was this good Christian who was going to be a missionary, you know, he was a zealous missionary until he got to college, heard of this evolution thing, and lost his faith and is now burning in hell somewhere. He, he, Juby doesn't say that, but that's, you know, where he's going with it. And I find that appalling and disgusting and I, I I really hope Ian Juby dies of ass cancer. Sorry, but it's he's just a, a sp despicable human being. Uh, first of all, he lifts almost everything he says there is from one article by Russell Grigg from Creation Magazine. I'll put a link in the crotch bar. You can read it yourself. Um, and Grigg, now he takes what Grigg said and he overstates what Grigg said. Grigg took what Leakey and others have said and overstated that in the article. So the article is an exaggeration and Jinjubi further exaggerates it. Um, you know, calling people up in their rooms to preach them and say, bring them to Christ. It's like bullshit. Uh, that is from, first of all, that is a, that that's from a book. Though, Grigg got his information from a book, um, Crap, I forgot the I forgot the title. Um, it, I don't know why. I just I was just looking at it. He got that, and that was a story told by one of Leakey's, the wife of one of Leakey's friends when he was at Cambridge. Okay, who was interviewed for a, a book about the Leakey's, the Leakey family, and uh, so that you know it, it, it was. The whole the whole thing of standing on a soapbox and preaching and such like that those were those were stories that Leakey told his roommates who then told his wife years later who then related it to uh, Virginia Morell the author of of that book and the other source that Greg uses I happen to have which is called White African um, if if you can see it is a an amazing book it it's it if you don't if you want to learn about Louis Leakey, uh, this is his autobiography, and it's 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 you, you can't put it down. It's 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 uh, not only a fun read. It it talks about how he developed his interest in science. It talks about his interest in politics, um, especially his anti-colonialism. Um, he was very very progressive. He, even at an early age, um, he was he always considered himself to be African, as in more of a the black African. Then he d identified with Europeans, um, and he had a great love of the people he worked with, the African people he worked with, um, and he he did huge things to improving the lives of and people in Kenya um, as an adult, as as a scientist later on. Um, an amazing person, and again, that Ian Juby could say anything disparaging about him pisses me off. Um, but the whole point of this article, the whole point of the article, of course, is that. You know, Leakey lost his faith and this. However, when you read this book, there's some in interesting stuff in here. Uh, first of all, um, so Leakey was going to dedicate his life to being a missionary, and then he learned about evolution and lost his faith. Um, Leakey tells in here about when he was 12 years old, um, how he assumed up until he was 12 that he was going to be a missionary like his father. Okay, that was his assumption. And then an ornithologist stayed with them who was visiting East Africa 
ornithologist stayed and and since leaky was always you know hunting birds and stuff like that as a child um this ornithologist he became he suddenly realized that you can be a professional and study something like birds and so leaky announced he was going to be an ornithologist when he grew up and then when he was 13 a relative sent him a copy of a of a, a book that was popular at the time um i don't know i don't recall the name of it i have to look it up uh about prehistory archaeology is what the book was about and leakey read this book and <coughs> excuse me uh he read the book and one of the things in this book is that he the book talked about stone tools and about primitive people making stone tools um fossil man and leaky at, at that time collected flint chips and pieces of obsidian i mean he was always fascinated with with you know sharp edged these these kinds of things and he uh went and looked through his collection and by in this pr- book on prehistory discovered that he himself had actually collected uh, some of the flint chips he had were, were actually stone tools they had been there they were worked blades um, and he suddenly became obsessed with evolution, human evolution, and archaeology. And at that point in time, he announced at 13 that he was going to be an anthropologist. So um, I'm not entirely sure where uh, this, you know, as an adult learning about evolution and suddenly abandoning his faith came from. Um, and th- that's the part I wanted to get to in this. That's the part I'm going to rant about here. Um, okay, so Lewis Leakey lost his faith in Christ after just learning about evolution. Um, you know, throughout this book, uh, there, it's peppered throughout with a discussion of um, the power of Christianity and how important it was in his life. Um, after he was 13 years old, while he was at Cambridge, while he was a scientist working in Africa, um, working with the missions, in fact, some of the missions that he supported, um, even though he disagreed with their uh, some of the racist attitudes they took. So I'm not sure, I'm not convinced, nor have I seen anywhere where Louis Leakey ever stopped being a Christian. Okay? Um, he, th- These people, again, are equating, once you believe in evolution then you must also be an atheist because we all know that only atheists believe in evolution, right? There are no uh, Christians, no Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, nobody out there with a belief in a deity or a belief in any kind of transcendent principle of human existence could possibly also accept evolution. Um, So to to Ian Juby for making that suggestion, fuck you, okay? Um, There's got to be a sin somewhere in your in your christian worldview um about about making the claim that somebody else is 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 you know unsaved because of their beliefs when you don't know because he was convinced by evolution he went looking for the evidence which by the way is pseudoscientific uh something the evolutionists create criticize us for all the time but he went looking for evidence and made his fame in finding hominid skulls evolutionist community we are so busted i this guy just he just oh he fucking took the cap off of our whole game right you know in science you know we we have this this nasty little bit of pseudoscientific thing that we like to do when we have a a supposition a hypothesis an idea we actually go out and look for evidence in order to demonstrate whether or not it's true or more importantly we go out and look for evidence in an attempt to disprove our concept, uh, if we can't disprove it, then our concept gains some kind of scientific rigor. Damn it. I mean, I, I, th- this is a dirty little secret we scientists have been keeping for a long time. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I wish the, the, the secret society, the cabal, had, had stopped Juby before he admitted to the world that you know science relies on evidence. Uh, science relies on actually finding evidence uh, as opposed to you know just saying pulling shit out of your ass and just saying it publicly and and, uh, demanding that people believe it to be true. This is one of those hominid skulls. Now, this was called Homo habilis, and the reason he called it that was because it was nicknamed the Tool Man. Uh, They found the skull, and then nearby they found bones that appeared to have been butchered by tools. So they assumed that it was Homo habilis 
who was really a smart ape, is what they're trying to imply. I swear sometimes these creotards pwn themselves. and Actually, they always pwn themselves. Uh, this is a great example of it. So he's showing us a, the fossil skull of Homo habilis that Lewis Leakey discovered, right? Um, guess what, fucktard? You know, you're holding the skull of OH05, okay? OH5, Zingenthropus is what Leakey... Dis First of all, it was discovered by Mary Leakey, not Lewis Leakey. It was described by Lewis Leakey as Zingenthropus boisei. Um, now is called Australopithecus boisei, although I think they've reverted back to Paranthropus. Uh, but the point is, is that it's not Homo habilis. It was never Homo habilis. It was never thought to be Homo habilis. It, it doesn't look anything like Homo habilis. Uh, you purchased these skulls, okay? This means that you sat on an either online order form or filled out a catalog order form. Don't you even know what you fucking bought? Are you that stupid? Or does the skull just kind of look... It looks a whole lot more like an ape, you know, than than, than actual Homo habilis fossil would. So, you know, you're... You, you figured it was a great way to, to show how stupid us evolutionists are for, you know, believing that this could even possibly be a human skull. I don't know what your game is. I don't know. I, it, it's, But this is it. This is an example. I mean, how much confidence can we put into anything that this asshat has to say? Anything. Okay? As a whirling wolf said, crocodile fun D. What what com what your outfit is that is that was that what's supposed to give people confidence that you know what you're talking about when you don't even know you're getting the species wrong you're getting the 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 whole thing wrong now let's see if you can fuck up even more okay that that would be fun to see can you can you possibly fuck up even worse now this is the second skull of Homo habilis this one was actually found by Donald Johansson who we're also going to discuss quite briefly he was also the discoverer of Lucy Lucy. The, our uh, supposed cousin. Our supposed cousin. And this one, again, we're going to analyze these in the end and determine which ones are ape Excellent. and which ones are human. Excellent. So we're going to take a closer look at these later on. Yes. All right. He got the species right this time. Uh, unfortunately, that's about all he has correct. Uh, the skull he is holding up is called, is it, its museum designation is OH24, Homo habilis, discovered by Peter and Zuby in 1968. I believe, uh, not, it's not the Homo habilis discovered by Donald Johansson, which only had a few skull fragments, um, however, almost a, a, a very well-preserved post-cranial skeleton, and that designation is OH62. Uh, can you, uh, this guy, I don't know that he can get anything right. That's what I find really amazing about him. But again, you know, I know he, he knows, just like Bao knows that his audience doesn't fact check. They could care. They could care less what these people say. You know, they they already know it's true. Oh, Johansson, when he the first discovery he made was actually, if I can get you to step back just a hair, certainly. This was actually the first discovery he made. He found this bone here and this bone right there, so it made up uh, composed a knee joint. Now, just to be clear, now I'm I'm positive Ian Juby uh, isn't trying to say that Lucy's knee was actually part of a different fossil find or was found in a different location. Okay, he wouldn't be one of those fuckwitted douchebags that would make that old tired claim, right? Um, he was just merely pointing to the knees of Lucy as an example of what the knee joint, a separate fossil Donald Johansson found the year before. Uh, that, that 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 that's certainly what he meant. I'm positive. Now, when you see Lucy depicted, what you are seeing, you are not seeing the knee that was actually found with it. You are finding, what you are looking at is a knee that was found first. All right. Oh, fuck you. See you guys in part three.